what a loving God we serve. What a loving God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a lovely God we serve. Come on, let's stand up and praise him for a second. Just clap your hands. He is a mighty good God. He is a great good God. He is a wonderful God. He is a lovely God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a lovely God we serve. One more time, one more time. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of the Lord on this another day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. We shall be glad in it. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast to the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yes. And let's exalt his name together. Why do I always say that? Because the Lord is good. good. 
God's mercies endureth forever, and God's truth endures until all generations. Just honor the Lord this morning on this another day that the Lord has made. This morning throughout this worship service, we want to be prayerful for Sister Lorraine Saunders, who was rushed to the hospital yesterday. The devil's always busy, amen. But we know a God that's able to heal, that able, is able to touch, that's able to deliver. So be prayerful today so we can come back with a good report. Amen. Well, if this is your first time with us, I'm Reverend Ken Anderson. I'm the senior pastor at Dale and Lee Haven United Methodist Churches in Middletown and towns in Delaware. And this is a special, special day. Uh, a day, a Sunday morning for me is always a special, uh -huh. special day. Yeah. Sunday, April the 14th, uh, 2024, the third Sunday uh -huh. after Easter and the second Sunday of the month of April. And that means we finally get to come back right here at Lee Haven. I missed the place, it seems. <laughs> Amen. And seeing all these special services we had over at Dell. There's just something about this little little old church <laughs> in towns in Delaware. I don't know what it is. Amen. We got family here. Associate Pastor has family in the back. Many of us have relatives here. That's what makes us special. It's just like coming home, right? Yeah. Amen. So we feel good about being at Lee Haven United Methodist Church in Townsend, Delaware. And I'm here to tell you, if you're within 30 minutes of this place, get in your car, comb your heat, your, your hair, put your teeth in, and get on down here. It's good on YouTube, but it's better inside this house. Amen. We just thank God. We want to welcome all of you that have joined us live on YouTube. Welcome all of you that are accessing this uh, worship service through Facebook. Yeah. Welcome to you that are listening on the conference call line. As soon as I lit up the conference call line, there were people already there this yeah. morning. And all of you that have joined us right here in person at Lee Haven United Methodist Church. I know Brother Carl going to probably turn some of these fans on. I'm a little warm this morning. We thank God for all of you that have come and joined us right here this morning. Well, believe it or not, it's still Easter. Yes. And we are in what they call the 50-day period of Easter tide as we head towards the day of Pentecost. Yes. So it's because it's still Easter, we can still glory in the reality that Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. Which means that for those of us who have placed our trust in Christ, we can also rise from any circumstance, any situation, any problem that you might be confronted with on this morning. Amen. Amen. Because heroes, you can rise up. Amen. And in just a few minutes, we will hear a challenging word from the Lord as I will be ministering from the text. Christ is risen. Now what? Now what? Look at somebody. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Now, what? now what? Now what? There's a now to that what, amen? And there's a what to that now that you and I need to hear about on this morning as we continue in the Easter season, as we remember the extraordinary sacrifice that Jesus made for each and every one of us. We too must make an extraordinary effort to reaffirm to reignite, to be re-engaged, especially in this end of day time that we are living in. I don't know whether you believe it or not, but you know these are Bible days, amen? Yes, it is. These are political yes, days. These are Bible days, yes. and thank God. What did we do to be so privileged, Pastor? Oh, that's right. To be alive. To see the Bible playing out on our television screen. I've studied prophecy most of my ministry, and I would never have thought I'd be around here to see Bible scriptures playing out right before our very eyes. And we thank God this morning that he prepared us for this moment, didn't he? With the word of the Lord. He said these are what? The beginning of what? 
and to do what? Don't be worried. Because what? Because the end is not yet. This is just the beginning. This might be the beginning of the end, but it's just the beginning. So don't you be afraid. It ain't your time yet. It's not our time yet. Don't you worry. God has been resurrected and we have a resurrected Christ walking around observing and seeing his plan being worked out right before our very eyes. Thank God. If God if Christ wasn't resurrected, you need to be worried. If Christ wasn't alive and well and walking in this earth, he would need to be worried. But we serve a resurrected Christ today who's alive and well in the earth. Yes, he is arisen and we're commanded to share that message with the world and those whom we encounter in our own worlds. Amen. Amen. But at this time, I want to turn the furtherance of the service over to our worship leader for this third Sunday after Easter, the lay leader here at Lee Haven United Methodist Church, Sister Letty Mitchell Anderson. Say amen as she comes as your worship leader on today. Praise the Lord. And I just want to tell you, church, that the word of the Lord truly does not return void. This morning, it was in my heart, and Pastor got up and said it. He said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is, is, endures forever, and his truth is, everla is everlasting, enduring through all generations. And, and we're so glad that it does. Let us mount the throne of grace. Dear Father God. We come as humbly as we know how in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. our Savior, this morning. Lord, we come into your house. Yes. We come into your house, Lord, because this is where we're supposed to be. My Lord. Lord, we come here just to get a word, indeed, Need Lord, a word yes. that we can hide in our heart yes. that you're going to give us, Lord. Yes. We come in here to hear the word that our pastor's going to bring to us. Christ is risen. Now what? Yes. Lord, we come as humbly as we know how to ask you to bless our families. Yes. Yes. Oh, Lord, bless everyone that's here. You know what they and their families stand in need of. Yes, do. We don't need to know, Lord, but you do. You do, Lord. Yeah. So we know that you're going to fix it. Yes, that you've already fixed it. Yes. Lord, you've already worked yes. it out. Oh, Father God, we thank you that we can come in here and just love on one another. Yes. We can come into a place that is safe, Lord, where we can speak your name. Yes. We can praise your name. Lord, name stay with us, Lord. Stay with us. Let what happens here this morning take us out of here better than when we came yes. in here this morning. Lord, we need you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for so many things. We thank you for our families. We thank you if so much so that if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't praise you enough. Yeah. We couldn't begin to appraise, uh, appraise you, Lord. We couldn't even begin. Lord, you brought us from a long way. Lord, we thank you that if we look back, if we just look back over where I come from, Lord, we'd all jump up and start singing and running and praising. Uh, I just can't tell it all. Oh, so Lord, this morning, we thank you for welcoming us into this place. And we welcome you into this place. And Lord, we're going to have us a good time in your name. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Lord. Our souls say amen. Amen and amen. And now we're going to have... Acknowledgement of our visitors. Visitors. Yes. Do we have any visitors? If so, please stand and tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. My family is from here. My grandmother goes to the church. Oh, you want to make it? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 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 I have other family here as well. Uh, I come from St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, I'm praise the Lord. Long peace in the church that I attended. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Do we have any other visitors? Well, we want to welcome you, Mr. Rogers, and, yeah. and feel free. Take your shoes off. If, if, if you want to sing, let us know. We'll let you sing a song. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And now we'll have we'll have our greeting from Dr. Devonna Williams. 
Amen, church. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Welcome and welcome everyone. And um, you know, I just wanted to to say that there's there is trouble. I'm going to go on with uh, what Minister Kane always says, uh-huh. but we can still have joy. My yeah, heart is right. is filled with uh, just the celebration we had yesterday with yeah. Sister Lorraine and and the bridal shower. It was just a wonderful time. And the amount of love that was shown to her because of so much that she does to give to others. And, um, you know, our prayers were answered last week and they'll continue to be answered. Just continue to pray for Sister Lorraine for her health and her healing this morning. My heart is heavy just thinking about her, but we had so much joy yesterday, so much joy and so much love. And we can keep that and hold that and cherish that and continue to have that love and joy for her and for all others who may be uh, a little bit, you know, not feeling their best. So, yeah. amen, church. Amen. amen. Let's yeah. keep it. Yeah. Keep her in our hearts. Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. 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 All right. Yes. She didn't yes. make it Thank you, Dr. Devana, yeah. for, for that wonderful greeting. And now we'll have our announcements. Catalyst Initiative Team. The Catalyst Team would like to thank everyone who came out and participated in the meeting last Sunday. It was an enormous success and a blessing to all. Women's Day. Women's Day is quickly approaching as a reminder. If you have not turned in your pledge or need a pledge form, please give please see Sister Jean Archie Thank you, the Women's Day Committee. The Monday Noonday Hour of Prayer meets every Monday at 12 Mm p.m. And as I like to always say, neither rain, sleet, snow, hail, nothing can stop it. Led by Minister David Kane. Please feel free to submit your prayer request to Minister Kane's email address, jesusmyhero3927 at gmail.com. If you desire to listen in on the prayer call, you may do so by dialing 425-436-6391. Access code 679-359. The Dale and Lee Haven Discipleship Bible Classes continue to meet both in person and via Zoom. The in-person class will follow our worship rotation at each church, 845 to 945 a.m. Please contact Brother Alan Hitchner, 302-607-4138, or Reverend Gwendolyn Henry at 302-513-2336. The Zoom meeting ID, 860-3387-0237. Passcode 902343. The adult Bible study has resumed and continues to meet every Wednesday, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. This study is led by Sister Diane Johnson and Brother Anthony Johnson. Please see either of them or Reverend Gwendolyn T. Henry for your books. The Zoom meeting ID is 957-2191-9223. Passcode 632774. Youth Sunday School continues to meet every Sunday, 945 to 1045 a.m. Please encourage the neighborhood youth, your children, the grandchildren, to attend Sister Jean Archie's to attend. Sister Jean Archie, Sister Bronte Ray, Sister Letty Mitchell, and Sister Toy Perkins lead this study. Thank you, Lord. Volunteers are needed for Wendy's Pack and Pray, Hop Food Pickup, and Bag Preparation. Please see Sister Marguerite Donis for additional information. Registration is no longer required for in-person worship. Masks are optional. For security and safety reasons, the doors of the sanctuary will be secured by 10.30 a.m. We will be live on YouTube by 10 a.m. 
Search Dale and Lee Haven UMC. The conference call line will be open. That number is 725-735-9405 and will be open by 945 a.m. Prayer for the Congress and next. Now we'll have prayer for the congregants sick and shut in. Minister David Kane, followed by scripture by Brother Stephen Briggs, Matthew 27, 15 to 22. Joshua 5, 13 to 15, and John 8, 52 to 59. Yes. Praise amen. the Lord. Praise amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. 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 So let the church say amen. amen. The Bible says I was glad when they said let's go amen. into the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. We praise and thank God once again for allowing us to be here in his presence once again. And as the first lady, as she was sending out her greeting, as she stipulated, piggyback on what I said, there's trouble and there's trouble all around us. Yes. There's trouble in lane and there's trouble out lane. Yeah. But God is in control He's able. and he don't make no mistakes. No, he does not. And as we continue to pray and as we continue to look to the hills from which comes our help, we're going to continue to remember those that are in mourn this morning. Yeah. We stand on the authority of God's word, Matthew 5, 4, blessed is he that mourn, yeah. they shall be comforted. Shall be comforted. Yeah. Mother Wanamaker, her son. Yeah. Sister Angela, her mother. Yeah. Sister Wanda Wilson, her aunt. And for those that are still trusting in the Lord for strength and healing, Mother Munson, yeah. Mother Briggs, Sister Sandra Nix, Sister Lorraine Sandra. Yeah. If your name wasn't called or your circumstances wasn't mentioned, see me so I can put you in a little red book. So the Monday noonday hour of prayer and ministry can continue to look to the hills from which comes our help. Yeah. Our associate pastor, she spoke about faith this morning. Mm. And that's what it's about. We pray, we have faith in God. Yes. We pray, we don't take it back from the altar. Yeah, I'm taking it back. We leave it there. Because one thing for sure, we know that God is the healer yeah. and God is the comforter. And as I worship thee this morning, as you always say, when the flowers wither, yeah. when the phone stop ringing, the phone yeah. stop ringing. come on now, you can't yeah. read the cards no yeah. more. Yeah. Go into that private closet, Mother Mother Wanda Mother. Sister Angela, go into that private closet. Know that God had you. He would have said he would never leave you, nor forsake thee. Yeah. That's all we can do. Silver gold, we have none. If I had a million dollars, that wouldn't even help your that circumstances help. at all. Yeah. There once was one by the name of Nicodemus. He thought he can buy salvation. But he found out that all the money in the world couldn't buy salvation. He had to be born again. He had to be born again. That's right, Pastor. He had to be born again. So let us pray. Our Father and our God, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, once again this day, oh God, we come back at your throne of grace. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, we re-enter your courts and gates this morning, oh God, with thanksgiving and praise. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father God, yes, because you sit high and you look low. Yes. You are the creator of thee. You created the heaven and earth. You created, oh God, the universes, oh God. But you chose earth for man to dwell, oh God. My Lord. And oh God, every time, oh God, we look to the hills from which comes our help. Oh God, we we we, we are just so fascinated, oh God, over your creation, oh God. Lord. The birds of the air, oh God. The stars, oh God, the moon, even this past week, oh God, they said it was an eclipse, oh God, but you already knew, oh God, over 2,000 years ago, oh God, when you sent your son, oh God, to Calvary, oh God, what was going to happen here on earth? But oh God, this morning, oh God, you're not done with us yet. 
Oh God, has your word always been brought forth, oh God, from the poor pit, oh God? This is the beginning of sorrow, but the end is not yet. Oh God, there's trouble. There's trouble all around us. But oh God, we continue to trust in you, oh God. We continue, oh God, to yes, stretch our hands out unto thee. There's no other help, oh God, that we know. Silver or gold, oh God, we have none. But, oh God, we believe, oh God, by faith, oh God, that you're going to continue to keep us, oh God, in the palm of your hands. Oh God, we're going to continue to believe, oh God, that you're going to heal the sick. We're going to continue to believe, oh God, that you're going to comfort those that are mourning, oh God. We're going to continue to believe that you are the author and the finisher. We're going to continue to believe that you are the bright and morning star. We're going to continue to remember and know, oh God, that you, oh God, is the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to continue to remember, oh God, you are Jehovah Jireh. We're going to continue to remember, oh God, you are Jehovah Nisa. You are Jehovah Shemal. You are that I am that I am. You are the king of kings and lords of lords. Oh, God, yes. Tell us to trust in you, oh, God. We need you, Lord. We know time is running out. My Lord. Help us, oh, God, to continue to hold on to your unchanging grace and your unchanging hand. We need you, Lord. We need you. Your word says, oh God, only a fool said in his heart, there is no God. Oh God, we know that who you are because you revealed yourself unto us in our epiphany moment. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your spirit that dwelleth in us, the paraclete, that teaches all things. That God is in all truth. Lead God, direct, and even convict us. Letting us know that we are doing something wrong. Because we turn around and look, Lord, in the world today, oh God. Many, oh God, is, is calling right, wrong, and, and wrong, right? How long, oh God? How long, Heavenly Father? How long? How long, oh God? We need you, Lord. Have mercy upon us, O oh Lord. If any sin, O oh God, we have sinned against thee. Please, O oh Lord, please forgive us. Cast our sins in a sea of forgiveness. Wash us, purge us, create in us, O oh God, a clean heart. Remember our sins no more, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you in advance. You are awesome, oh God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. We bless your name, oh God. Have mercy upon thee, oh God. And we promise you, Master, have this all said and done of this day. We'll be so careful once again to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise, almighty powers of Calvary, victory in Jesus' name. And that all God's trouble say amen, amen, amen. That's right. Lift God up. That's why we are here, to worship him, to lift him up, to say thank you. You have taken us for another seven days. You didn't have to do it, but you did it. You woke us up this morning. Oh, God, a home getting burned down, oh, God. A strong man getting kicked in the door, oh, God. Oh, God, we thank you. We bless your name, oh, God. Have your way this day, oh, God. In Jesus' name. That's right. Come on, church. Give him, a, give him the glory. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Good morning, morning church. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I, I am uh, feeling some some beautiful energy yeah. oh, 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 in this little building. 
well, that our pastor refers to. Well, yes, yes. My, my, my. But as it was mentioned earlier, I will be reading the scripture from three different books. The first of which is Matthew 27, verses 15 through 22. Yes, sir. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. Mm -hmm. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. Mm. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Mm -hmm. Jesus Barabbas mm -hmm. or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Mm -hmm. yes. For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him a message. Mm. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. My, my, my. For I have suffered a great deal today Jesus. in a dream because of him. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Even wise back then were much wiser. But the chief priests and the elders yeah. persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Yeah. Asked yeah. the governor. Mm. Barabbas, they answered. Yes. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Yeah. Mm. Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. My, my, my. Jesus. Joshua 5, 13 through 15. Yes, sir. Now when, Joshua, now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with, with a drawn sword in his hand. Mm -hmm. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Mm. Neither, he replied. Neither. But as commander of the army of the Lord, mm -hmm. I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? Mm -hmm. The commander of the Lord's, Lord's army replied, take, your, take off your sandals Woo. for the place where you are standing is holy. Yes. And Joshua did so. Yes, yes. John 8, 52 through 59. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. Yeah. At this, they exclaimed, uh -huh. Now we know that you are a demon possessed. Jesus. Abraham died and so did the prophets. Yet you say that whoever obeys your word will never taste death. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Are you greater than our father Abraham? Mm. He died and so did his prophets. Who do you think you are? Mm. Jesus replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. Mm -hmm. My father, whom you claim is your God, yeah. is the only is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. Yes. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. Yeah. Mm. But I do know him and obey his word. Yes. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said. Uh -huh. And you have seen Abraham? Uh -huh. mm. yeah. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. Yes. Yes. At this, they picked up stones to stone yeah. him. Mm. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple grounds. Mm -hmm. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word and sanctify it in our hearts. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Throw the ball, church. Yes. Get on with it. Get on with it. Hallelujah. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you. He's just making sure that we're able to be here another Sunday. Oh, yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord all over again. Yeah. Yeah. And we want to thank Minister Kane for that wonderful prayer. Yeah. And we certainly want to thank Brother Steve yeah. for the reading of the scripture. Yeah. The I am. I am. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And now we'll have our tithe and offering for mm -hmm. Senior Pastor Ken Anderson, yes. followed by a selection by Sister Mary Smith. All right. And after Sister Mary Smith, mm -hmm. the next voice that we heard here will be our Senior Pastor Ken Anderson preaching Christ is risen now what and after that we'll have our altar call and benedic benediction 
by Senior Pastor Ken Anderson. All right. Amen. God bless. Amen. 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 Just before I receive tithes and offerings, I was reminded uh, Sister Tina's mother, Sister May, still needs our prayers. Yeah. She's been under the weather at least for a week now. So would you just stretch out your hand and just yeah. kind of visualize Sister May and Tina and Kurt, and let's intercede for Sister May right now. Lord, yeah. we thank you, thank you for the prayers that have gone forth yeah. so far this morning. We want to include in that prayer, Sister May, yeah. Tina's uh, Easton's mother right now, Lord. We include her in the covenant that you have with us that says, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee, that you were wounded for our transgressions and that you were bruised for our iniquities, that the chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes we are healed. Then you said in Isaiah, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Lord, we don't take a back from that. We believe that covenant is as true today as it was 2,000 years ago. And we claim our healing. We claim healing for everyone that was mentioned from this pulpit this morning. We ask you to go into the hospital room, touch, heal, deliver, cause the doctors to be confused by what they see happening after the prayers that have gone up in this place. Cause them, Lord, to say, what church do you go to? Who's praying for you? Cause them, Lord to come out of these circumstances with more faith, with more trust, with more belief in who you are and who they are. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. 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 We just believe God. We just believe God. We just walk by faith in these church, this church, and not by sight. We just trust in the Lord with all of our heart. We don't lean to our own understanding. While we trying to figure out God is working it out. Amen. Just trust God. Just trust God. In spite of what you feel, in spite of what you see, that's what walking by faith is all about. It's all about. We walk by faith and not by what we see. Sometimes what you see is not real. What you see in the spirit is not really the way it is. When God is at work, God is a working behind the scenes God. That's right. That's right. Oh, I feel like preaching. Anyway, thank God for all that's gone forth. Thank God for the worship leader and the scripture reading. A little scripture reader today tried to preach a little bit. He's a singer. Steve is a senior vice president for Wells Fargo, but we can still get you a license, Amen. Steve. That's right. We can still get you up here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. As we were prepared to receive our tithes and offerings this morning, I was drawn to a not too often shared story that deals with honesty before God when it comes to our stewardship. Now, of course, you've heard it from me before, but it doesn't get preached too much or taught too much in church because it's rough. It's rough. But the Lord put it on my heart to share this again with you today. It comes from the book of Acts chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. Take the time to read the whole thing on your own, but I'll give you the executive summary in this few moments I have with you. It's the story of Ananias and Sapphira, who apparently made a commitment to God and their church at that time as part of the sale of their property. And the commitment was that they would give the proceeds of the sale of the property back to God. Now, they didn't have to make that commitment, but they made it. They made it. So they sold the property, but kept back part of the proceeds for themselves, which is against what they told God they were going to do, and something that God didn't force them to do in the first place. So they kept back part of the proceeds for themselves and gave the rest to the church. And the Bible says that they then placed what was left of the money at Apostle Peter's feet. I'd be scared to death to do that. That's right. 
The apostle Peter, through a revelation of the Holy, how, how many of you know God will reveal to the man and the woman of God what is really going on? There came a revelation from the Holy Ghost to the apostle Peter the minute they did that, that questioned their honesty, that questioned their integrity. And in verses three through four, it said that Satan had filled their heart. And as a result, they had lied to the Holy Spirit. You might be all right if you lie to me. You might be all right if you lie to your wife. You might be all right if you lie to your best friend. But when you got so bold, you start lying to the Holy Ghost. Uh, they lied to the Spirit. And they had held back for themselves some of the money they received from the sale of the property, some land. But apparently, this is the bad part right here. Uh -huh. But apparently they acted as if they had given all the money to the church. They acted like they had given it all. The Bible says that the apostle Peter confronted them and said, you have not lied to men. But to God, but to God. Church family, remember our financial gifts, our covenant of giving is not an agreement with me as your pastor. It's not with the finance committee. We can't make anyone enter into a covenant with God about what you do with your money. Wish we could. Can't do it. But we do share with you regularly what we believe God says you should do. Not what you have to do with your tithe and with that cheerful offering. But ultimately, your giving is between you and Jehovah. And we do our best to use it as God has directed us in his word. Can you say amen? amen. And we must be doing a good job because he keeps blessing us. We have overflow. We have more than what we need uh -huh. for what God has called us to do. Now, if we want to do something else, he's going to have to bless us a little bit more. Uh -huh. But he's blessed us with more than enough. Yeah. Apostle Peter said to Ananias that he had lied not to men, but to God. And upon hearing this, Ananias immediately fell down dead. Three hours later, Sapphira came in. Yeah. I guess she didn't know about what oh, just yeah. happened. That's right. She might have acted differently. Sapphira came in not knowing what had happened, and she also lied to Peter about the amount of money given to that church from the sale of the land. Yeah. And she instantly fell down dead. Yeah. The sin was not only that they held back part of the money, from the cell for themselves to which they had promised God to give. But when confronted about it, they lied. Yeah. And they were lying to God. Look at somebody and say, don't lie to God. Don't do it. Don't Try to avoid God. doing that if you yeah. can. Don't lie to That's God. pretty serious <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's pretty serious <laughs> stuff. <laughs> You got so bold and so bad, you can lie to God. Well, you on your own. You on your own. Remember that your tithe, the ten percent of all your increase, whatever that is, Leviticus says is holy unto God. You don't have to treat it as holy, but it's holy anyway. Holy, that's right. If you use it to pay the rent, it's holy anyway. If you use it for the car payment, it's holy anyway. If you use it to put gas in your car, that oh, is holy anyway. Yes, sir. How should you how should you handle something that the Bible calls as holy? How do you handle holy things? You handle them with great discretion, with great care. You put it aside that it doesn't get caught up and commingle with the other stuff. You put it aside, right? I, I get I get my check, whatever. I get my check. I'm a little bit scared for about 30 seconds until I can get it from here to over here. 
Not that I'm scared God might jack me up, but I know what that has meant for me throughout my life. That it's holy. The Bible says if you don't hold, handle it holy, it turns into Sharon. It turns into an unholy thing in the book of Leviticus. And in Leviticus, they had a program where if you didn't handle that appropriately, you could get God, get back in God's graces by doubling up. We don't have that in the New Testament. So I'm not sure how you do it, except to repent. Or to admit it and quit it uh -huh. and to start afresh. Get it under the blood. Look at somebody and think, say, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for grace. Yes, sir. Remember that the tithe is holy. Even in these very, very difficult times, that's the test. The test wasn't five years ago. The test is right now. The test is right now. When your money might get funny and there's too much month left at the end of the money, right? This is where the test is. This is when the covenant is. God said, test me in this. That's the only place in the Bible that God says something like that that I've been able to find. He says, prove me in this. Test me in this to see. Whether or not what I said is true, whether or not I will open up the windows of heaven for you, whether or not I will make a way where you thought there was no way, whether or not I will make that man do something that you didn't think he would ever do for you, whether or not I would touch somebody's heart and cause them to do for you and they didn't even know why they were doing it. Whether or not something would happen that would change your circumstance yes. that you couldn't do on your own. You know, I'm going off. I don't know who this is for. If everything had dried up, I didn't know in the natural, say in the natural, because that's where we live, right? I, if I didn't know in the natural how this was going to get fixed. Yes, sir. And I had done what the covenant said do, uh -huh. and I was sitting on fumes. Uh -huh. I'd rather be at peace uh -huh. knowing that I obeyed God yes, and didn't have a pot. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'd rather know that I have peace with God. Because when you get in a jam like that, guess who you can go to? Say, God, you know this situation. You know the condition. You said the eyes of the Lord are in every place. You know what the situation is. You need to prove to me right now that you're God all by yourself. You have what the, in the legal in the legal uh, uh, field, uh -huh. they, to, in order to bring a case before the court, uh -huh. you have to have standing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or you can't bring it before the court. When you've been faithful in this covenant Ooh, and you yeah. find yourself in a jam jam, y'all know what a jam jam is? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A jam jam, you have standing before the throne of grace. You can go boldly before the throne of grace with power and with an anointing and with confidence to put a demand on God. You said it right here. I've done my part. Now do the things you are famous for. Oh, I'm so way off my stuff. Uh, Y'all. Y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop coming to church with all this stuff that I, the, the Lord it puts an unction on me to talk about. Amen. I, I I blame you. Amen. For those of you in person this morning, we will not be passing an offering plate, but our usher will place a plate near the exit for those who want to sow their seed as they exit the church today. For the rest of us, we will continue to sow our seed through Cash App or via the mail. If this is your first time with us this morning, 
If you're not a member of Dale or Lee Haven, the Lord has placed it on your heart to bless the ministry. You can share your gift electronically through Cash App by contacting Sister Jane Archie. Let me catch my breath. At 302-598-5516 for contributions to Dale. And for contributions to Lee Haven, you can send your contributions to Zelle, to our Zelle account. That number is 302-423-6883. Or you can reach out to Sister Cindy mm -hmm. at 302-653-7619. You can also mail your gifts, tithes, and offerings to the following addresses. For Dale, you can mail them to Dale UMC, PO Box 190, Middletown, Delaware, 19709 for Lee Haven. You can mail them to Lee Haven UMC 413 Blackbird Landing Road, P.O. Box 279, Towns in Delaware, 19734. Yeah, yeah. Let us pray. Yes, sir. Over our tithes and our offerings. Thank you for what you've given us today and our tithes and offerings as we continue to prepare ourselves for this time and the season in which we are living. We're going to be tested, Lord. But you have already given us the words in so many areas that allow us to pass the test, to allow us to have faith in your word, to allow us to have faith and confidence in your covenant and your promise. Lord, that might be situation where that's the only thing we have to stand on. It might be the only thing in which we can put our trust because we've already tried man. We've already tried brother, sister, cousin, siblings. We've already tried them and they, they failed. They just, they disappointed us, but we can put our trust in you when everything else has failed. The true and living God who has promised to be a very present help for us in the time of trouble, a very present help in the time of need. Help us to always place our trust in you when things look bad, to always put our trust in you when we're not sure how that situation is going to resolve itself, to always put our trust in you when we can't figure it out. Believe in and trust in that as we have brought these things to you, you are working all things out after the counsel of your own will on our behalf. We thank you and ask for all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let everybody say amen. amen. Why don't you give the Lord a hand yes. clap? Yes. That's all right. That's all right. Yes, sir. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Yes. Bless your name, oh God. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, yes. She's back. God bless you. God bless you, sis. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to know that God's not dead. Yes, yeah. he's, yeah. he's he's yet alive. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I'm gonna try to sing this morning. All right. Yeah. God's not dead. He's, he's still alive. alive. God's not dead. He's, he's still alive. alive. God's not dead. Yeah. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. Ah, yes, I can right. feel him in my feet. Yes. I can feel him all over me. All right, all right. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. He woke me up this morning. He's still alive. He woke me up this morning. He's still alive. 
Hallelujah. All right, all right. My God's not dead. like y'all procedure after procedure and she keeps coming back keeps showing up keeps pressing her away we thank god for sister mary mary smith a soldier in the army of the lord would you just worship the lord right there with me where you are imagine that you're standing before the throne of grace with uplifted hands, which is, which is a sign of submission before the Lord. What would you say in his presence? What would you say to our God in that moment? I would say something like, Father, I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to be in your presence right now. Thank you for allowing me to have this time alone with you. Thank you for the quietness of this moment. Lord, I know I've thanked you before and I praised you before. I tried to do what you've asked me to do. I haven't been perfect, but I strive in unto perfection in the fear of God. I want to do right. I have a heart to serve you. I thank you for doing whatever it was you did to me to cause me to want to be saved. I know others, Lord, that have gone on without knowing you, without meeting you. And I don't know what made me so privileged, so special that you allowed me to be me. So, Lord, as I stand before you with lifted hands, I just simply want to say thank you for what you've done, what you're doing and what you're going to do. 
You've been good to me. Everything hasn't worked out, but you've been good to me. I've been sick sometimes and I couldn't get well, but you've been good to me. You watched over me when I was threatened. You've been good to me. And I just want to take a moment and say thank you, Lord, for allowing to me to be here in this moment. I just want to say thank you. I want to give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of the Lord. Why don't you look to the person sitting next to you and say, it's good to be here. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good where the spirit of the Lord is. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's what? There's liberty. There's freedom. To allow the spirit of the Lord to have its way. Well, we thank God for all that has transpired in this beautiful worship service this morning as we continue in the Easter resurrection season heading towards Pentecost. Amen. Day 50. The 50th day of the end of Easter tide, as we call in the United Methodist Church, is Pentecost. We honor uh, our Lord and Savior Christ, the anointed one. We honor I just want to take a moment to say special honor to this fine ministry team that we have at Dale and Lee Haven. Amen. Many of them that work behind the scenes on so much that we attempt to do for the Lord. The leadership of all of our churches, people that serve on committee, committee chairs, our ushers, all the behind the scene saints that serve so faithfully at Dale and Lee Haven week after week after week. You may never hear their name called. Yes. For often they serve silently, yes. but faithfully in our midst. Yes, yes. Can you say amen? Amen. Yes. That's all right. But the, the Lord sees, right? Yes. And the yes. Lord documents every act of love among us. Yes. And the Bible says whatever is right, one day he'll pay. Amen. I'd rather get paid by him than by Minister Kane. Amen. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather have God owe me than Minister Kane. Amen. There is a word from the Lord on this second or third Sunday after Easter. I pray that you brought your word of the Lord with us. I want to read again a portion of what Brother Steve read so well for us. Again, from the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 17 through 22. Then Joshua, chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. And finally, John, chapter 8. And I said it before, but I believe John, chapter 8, you'll find seven of the most powerful verses in the word of God. Yeah. Seven of the most powerful verses in God's word, verses 52 through 58. One of my favorites. Of course, I'll be reading from the closest we have to the original text today. The King James Version of the word of God. First Matthew 27, verses 17 through 22. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. For envy. They did it for jealous reasons, y'all. John 3.16 says, for where there is envying and strife, there is confusion and every evil work so for he knew that for envy they had delivered him how thou nothing to do with that just man oh let me these back up verse 19 when he when he was sat down on the judgment seat his wife sent unto him saying have thou nothing to do with that just man called him a just man how does she know that how does she know that 
She said, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us who Pilate's wife was, but as a wife, she had observed many things before when her husband was sitting on that judgment seat. She knew the kind of things her husband had the power to do. After having that dream, she clearly was a little bit more concerned that her husband might take some kind of punishment against who she called a just man, who she was able clearly to discern that because of this dream she had. Even thought it might be possible her husband would cause this man to be crucified. And because of her dream, she pleaded with her husband, the governor, to have nothing to do with punishing this just man, Jesus. I agree with Brother Steve. You got a wife, brother, who loves the Lord and has a dream. And you know that she dreams and the Lord uses her like that. I got one of those at home. She dreamed like that before she knew me. And those dreams mean something. Mm -hmm. And I'm not stupid enough or arrogant enough to, if she comes up to me and says, husband, Kenny, that's what she called me. <laughs> and, and, and brother Kirk, sometimes she calls me little Kenny. <laughs> When she comes to me like that, she got my full attention. Got my full attention. She pleaded with her husband not to do, not to have anything to do with it. But he was conflicted. He was the governor. He was in charge of the judgment seat. He had political. He had political pressure to do something. To do what the crowd wanted. He could have walked off, gave, given up his position, and said, my wife said, I shouldn't do this, and I know she's prophetic. I'm not doing it. And left, walked off. Probably would have got him killed. Could have done that. We might be put in a position one day where we're, we're, we're put in a position where we're, we're called on to deny Christ. If someone were to say, and I, God forbid we are ever put in that position, that we would evolve into a place where they said, are you a Christian? And you knew that the answer to saying yes had consequences? What would you do? What would you do if that happened to you today? Verse 20. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy, destroy Jesus. That's the word the King James uses. Destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, whether of the twain, the two, will ye that I release unto you? They said Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus? which is called the Christ, which is called the anointed one. They all say unto him, let them be crucified. Anyone who ever lives at some point in their life will have to answer that same question. I have a couple sermons around that whole concept because it's so real on how you answer has serious eternal implications. What are you gonna do about Jesus? If you are under the sound of my voice this morning, if you have heard the story of Christ, if you have been offered the opportunity at an altar call or anywhere else to receive Christ as Lord of your life, then you have already answered that question. Either you said, yes, I receive him, or you said no, or not yet, not now, 
or you did not respond at all, thinking that made a difference. Which in terms of where you would spend eternity is the same as you having rejected him. By a lack of a response. Now from Joshua 5, verses 13 and 14, it came to pass when Joshua was by, was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him. Now, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to be controversial. I'm not trying. I'm not just not trying. I'm not trying to create controversy. Look at somebody and say, Pastor's not trying to create controversy. I'm not, I'm not trying to be controversial. But if you look in certain translations of the word of God, the word man is not here. <sighs> Y'all get it? Behold, there stood a man, a, a man, a full-grown man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? In other words, whose side are you on? Y'all know the situation. Joshua was getting ready to go to war. Yes, he was. And he said, nay, mm -hmm. but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? Church family, you know you are soldiers in the army of the yeah, Lord. Yeah. And guess who's leading you daily mm -hmm. as you engage in spiritual yeah, warfare yeah. each and every day? Yeah, yeah. You are yeah, not in yeah, this yeah. by yeah. yourself. Oh, the yeah. spirit of the Lord yeah. is with you. Yeah. And God, Jehovah, mm -hmm. Jehovah Jireh yeah. is leading the army that you are a yeah. part of. And he calls himself the captain yeah. of the host. Yes, sir. And leads us. Yes. Into battle, into battle each and every day. Uh -huh. Oh, church family, he is our captain. Amen. Amen. And finally, one of my absolutely favorite conversations between Jesus and the Pharisees in the entire word of God. Please read this entire chapter on your own sometime. I'll just read from John chapter 8, verses 52 to verse 58, starting at verse 52. Now listen to this convo. Mm -hmm. Jesus has already been radical, already done things that uh, suggest that he is God in the flesh, already done, got the Pharisees and the Sadducees angry with him, already done things that, to, to cause people to have secret meetings, to get him out of the way, already done made the leadership, the hierarchy, the high muckety mucks mad. Yeah. And he goes, Jesus was radical. <laughs> he was bold. He didn't care. Right. Hallelujah. Then said Jews unto, the, unto Jesus, yeah. Now we know that thou has a devil. Abraham is dead. And the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death? Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? In other words, who do you think you are? Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, if I honored myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Uh -huh. Yet you have not known him. But I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. Jesus calling the Pharisees, Sadducees, and other important Jews a liar right to their face. I shall be a liar like you, but I know him and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He rejoiced to see this moment. 
He's not here, but he knew about it. And he saw it in the spirit and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. And has thou seen Abraham? How is that possible? Jesus said unto them, <laughs> you know, some people do stuff and act like they want to get killed. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> he didn't have to say this like this, but look what he says to people that had the authority to cause him to have a bad day. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus was a bad boy. He was a bad man. Listen, there are th three things from my theological discernment that were core to getting Jesus crucified. The first one was when he raised Lazarus uh -huh. from the dead uh -huh. after G after Lazarus had been dead been dead for four days. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because Orthodox Jews only believed that a that God could raise somebody from the dead on the fourth day. The second thing was after that he went into Jerusalem and a couple days later. He went into the synagogue and turned over the money tables. Now he's messing with their money. Y'all know how y'all are. I heard y'all say it. Certain things you don't mess with, at least with black people. Don't mess with my kids. Don't mess with my family. And God, don't mess with my money. He turned over the money tables and said, my father said that this is a house of prayer. And you have turned it into something else. And the third thing that's core is when he said that. When he said, before Abraham was, I am. He just put himself into antiquity. He just placed himself in the Old Testament. He just fulfilled in that one statement thousands of proph prophecies that have yet to come play, take place. My text on this third Sunday after Easter, a question that is being asked of each one of us again this morning. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 50 years. Yes, Christ is written, risen. We've confirmed that. But now what? Now what? Yes. Now what? Father, open up our eyes and ears that we might finally, for some, see and hear the wonderful truth that is in your law. Touch, deliver, set free. Heal, reclaim, restore those under the sound of my voice that are looking for something different. Let them know that the difference that they're looking for, for can only be found in you. Encourage this thy people in this unique time in which we are living. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody say amen. Amen. To all who are watching this worship service this morning, especially of those of you that are watching remotely on the conference call line, or maybe somebody who has never set foot in either Dale or Lee Haven, but you watch this worship service every Sunday. Do y'all know there are people like that? I know you're out there because I, 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 I have met some of you. I met a good brother this week while having lunch alone, not bothering anybody all by myself, Pastor, yeah. trying to get some quiet time, uh -huh. having lunch. Uh -huh. 
this brother rolled up on me, looked kind of rough, you know, we had a hoodie on, I was getting ready to have to go into my stuff. <laughs> I'm saved, but I ain't forgot. You come, you come roll up because you see me on YouTube. You think that I'm a pastor and I ain't got nothing. Don't make that mistake. You might roll up and crawl back. Don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. <laughs> but he approached me at lunch and told me, he, he just looked at this boy, like, he said, keep doing what you're doing. Look at God. Hallelujah. Glory. Yeah, God. He said, keep doing what you're doing because he watches every Sunday. Yes. Glory. Church family, you also have people watching you every day. Yes. Watching you every day. They know that you're trying to represent Christ, represent what it means to be a Christian, and they may never approach you like this brother approached me this week. But don't you get it twisted. They are watching you. They're in the same space that you are in, and they're watching you to see what the life of a Christian really looks like when you're not in church. To see if it's real. To see if it's real. To see if there's a difference between people who go to church and Christians. Y'all listening? Look at somebody and tell them somebody's watching you. Somebody's watching you. Don't, don't say I'm your pastor and you mess it up. Don't say you go to Dale and Lee Haven and you just messed up. Blame another church. We know the Lord is watching. Proverbs 15 verse 3 says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Every place, Lord. Every place. Even there. Every place. Even when I got the door closed and the lights out and I'm under the cover. Every place. Even when I'm out of town where nobody knows who I am. Even when I'm in the club. <laughs> Even when I'm in the place where there's none of your people, are you there too? Look at somebody say, every place. Every place. Every place. Every place. Jesus is in the places where you wouldn't think he'd ever show up. And he's just not beholding the good. The uh -huh. scripture says that I just read says he's beholding the evil and the good. And the good. He's yeah. looking at it all. He's looking at the nasty stuff. Oh, my How my can he look at that? Jesus. He's God. He's, God. That's just... he's looking, beholding the evil. And the good. There's another scripture that says, if you go to heaven, uh -huh. he's there. He's there. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. If you go to the uttermost parts of the earth, he's there. He's there. Yes, sir. If you go down into Sheol, the underworld, yes, sir. he is there. He's, there. he's everywhere. everywhere. Beholding yeah. the evil mm. and the good. Somebody said in some, where can I go to hide from you? Nowhere. 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 He's God. Nowhere. He 
He's not your pastor. He's God. I can't be everywhere at the same time. He can. Just know that everyone, no matter what religion you are, no matter what your faith, no matter what philosophy or ism you ascribe to, whether it be New Age philosophies, whether it be Buddhism, whether it be humanism, whether it be Islam, whether it be to ancient Asian Confucius type thought, whether it be astrology, uh -huh. Hare Krishna, uh -huh. yes. no matter what you might align yourself with, yes, you might be an atheist. Mm. You might yeah. be a hardcore agnostic. Oh, wow. You don't believe in anything. Yeah. But not believing in anything is a belief in, it, in and of itself. You don't believe in anything. That's a religion. It really don't matter though, because eventually, look at somebody and say, eventually, eventually, you're gonna have to answer the Jesus question. Eventually, before you take your last breath on this earth, you're gonna have to answer the Jesus question. No matter who you choose to worship or bow the knee, no matter who your heroes are, in this world, people you hold in high esteem, people that you turn the TV on to watch, people whose picture you got hanging on the wall, no matter who you hold in high esteem, you will have to deal with this Jesus question. No matter who you might declare as the goat. Y'all know what the goat is? Who you might declare the greatest of all time, the greatest of all time, LeBron or Jordan or Kobe. Now, I'm a real basketball fan. Who remember Penny Hardaway? Oh, I saw some hands go up. You're a real basketball fan right there. You didn't raise your hand. You're just playing basketball. I vote for Penny Hardaway. If you are a real basketball, who said, what do I say? Just, just be quiet. I'm preaching. Quiet. Let me do. I'm on the anointing. I know what I'm talking about. Just be quiet. I'm talking. God talking. I think God's still talking. If you're a real basketball fan, then you know that Penny if he wouldn't have got, gotten injured, he would have been better than Kobe because he was better than Kobe when he first came into the league. It took Kobe three years to get where Penny was when he first came into the league. So you know who I'm voting for. But I, I don't know if that was God. I just went off a minute. <laughs> Let's get back into the spirit. Let's get back into the spirit. Because in the spirit, you won't gratify the lust of your own flesh. Let's get back into the spirit. It really doesn't matter what you believe this morning. But at some point along your spiritual journey, you are going to have to be confronted by a life-changing situation. Ooh, if you haven't had one of those yet, keep breathing. You be confronted with a life-changing one-time event in your life that will force you to reevaluate your life and who you are and what you believe and what you've done and what you have left undone. You're going to come into that and it's going to make you deal seriously, maybe for the first time, about the claims of that man from Galilee that they call Jesus. Yes. You're going to have to, even if you don't like him or believe, you're going to have to hear what he said and said whether that is could be true or not. Yes. Yes. Mm. You might decide to reject him. 
to reject what Jesus said about himself. He might reject what the prophet said yeah. about him thousands of years before it happened. You might decide to discount what Jehovah said about himself. This, see, this is a reality. We might be here till four o'clock today, but this is the reality. Jehovah was here on earth saying that he was the Christ. And while Jesus was walking down here for three and a half, 33 and a half years, he was up there as God. Down here as Jesus the Christ, up there still as God. It takes a God to do that. You might reject what he said. You might choose to reject everything that we teach and preach about him, even his word, as fake news, as tomfoolery, as fakery. All the documented and undocumented miracles he did in his time here in ministry, you might reject it. The Bible says that there aren't enough books to even document yeah, that everything right. that he did yes. during his time of ministry. He said there are not enough books mm -hmm. to document all that he yeah. did. We get a little smidgling of his time in ministry. You might choose to still believe that Lazarus wasn't really dead. Yeah. He's just crazy if you believe that. That they somehow figured out how to wrap Lazarus in grave clothes and came up with some kind of scheme that maybe he just held his breath for four days in the tomb. You might still choose to believe the lie the soldiers were paid to tell by the high priest Caiaphas. Because on that Sunday morning, Jesus' body was missing from the tomb, a tomb that had been sealed with the gover governor's seal on the seam of it, that if broken by anybody, they would see immediate death. The tomb was sealed and guarded by seven of the most elite Roman soldiers they had who certainly wouldn't have fallen asleep during their watch. Because if they did, they themselves would be crucified. So like those soldiers and some Jews, even today, you might still choose to believe that the disciples stole his body in the middle of the night, somehow. And seven Roman soldiers who had sworn with their life to protect the grave site somehow did not notice. You got to really be creative to believe that. You might call the people who saw a resurrected Christ at least six different times after his resurrection and 500 people who saw him all at the same time. You might call them delusional. You might call them liars. It's amazing what you might believe, what you might conjure up, the excuses that we might make just so you can continue to reject Christ as God in the flesh. You might not even believe the testimonies of people that you personally know who, although they are far from perfect, you know what they were like before they gave their life to Christ. And now they've been translated from the kingdom of darkness and they're in the light of the son of God. They are different. They're different. You might well find a way to still reject all of that today. But church, it is beyond dispute that we are living in a world of a resurrected Christ, which means that everything he said is true. 
And for those who continue to put Christ on the back burner, he still has a purpose for you. But I'm here to tell you this morning, time is running out. Your clock is running out. Your clock is running out. For we know not the day or the hour when we might leave here unexpectedly. I would be scared personally if after message after message after hearing all of my life about Jesus, after hearing about the resurrection, after hearing the testimony, after hearing year after year after year. And I'm still not saved. The scripture says that. It says, you've done all this, you've heard all this, and you're still not saved. Time is running out. Can't you see it? Can't you see what's happening? Well, that, that's been happening all the time. No, not what we see today has not been happening for the last 40 years. We are seeing prophecy come forth before our very eyes. If the Lord hadn't given us in advance Matthew 24, I would expect the rapture to take place any moment. But he said the time is not yet. Because there's work to do. Remember last Sunday sermon when we talked about the figures about how many are still unsaved in this world? Some even haven't heard the gospel. Jesus said, I'm not returning until everybody has had a chance. And our purpose in these days is to really, in our part, in our world, in our sphere of influence, is to be on the record as having done all we can do individually and as a church to get the gospel out. Where he has told us, that's our end day call. Individually and as a church. And when we have done that, for many of us, we have positioned ourselves when we have to face him in the judgment. He'll look at this moment. He'll look at this time. He'll look at what you heard, what was ministered to us and how you responded to it. I believe he's going to have it like on videotape somehow. That he's going to roll it back so there'll be no question because the Bible says in every two witnesses, but the two, now the two or three witnesses, every word is established. He's God, but he won't force himself for you just to rely on him. He's going to push rewind. Time is running out. Time is running out. And the fact that we say that really is not accurate because even the next few seconds is not promised to us. Sister Lorraine went to a bridal shower last night, happy, joyful, beautiful. You know, y'all know how Lorraine is. And all of a sudden her blood work. I heard her, heard it this morning, her blood count. I don't know how she's still here. That's how quick it can happen. And that's a person that serves God with all of her heart. That's a person that is faithful. Ever since I've been here, showing up, doing the work of the Lord when it was difficult. Her and her husband. That's how quick it is. Why are you wasting time? We are not our own. We've been bought with the price. Yes. Mm. Mm. Oh. yes, Christ is risen. Yeah. Now what you gonna do about it? Uh. You ain't got a lot of time. I don't know who I'm saying that to, but somebody doesn't have a lot of time. Maybe you will finally deal with a resurrected Christ at the doctor's office. Yeah. 
After you are told you have six months to live and you're told to get your affairs in order, it might be that moment that you finally make a decision about Christ because you remember that he healed the sick and he raised the dead. Somebody told you that. And you even remember reading somewhere where he said that I am the Lord that healeth thee. Yeah. That he's Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. Because either Jesus was the greatest actor that has ever lived. Either Jesus was the greatest manipulator to have ever walked this earth. Either he was a schizophrenic or a lunatic. Or Jesus was who he said he was. And did and will do what he promised to do. Yeah. I'm sure the Jews thought he was all of that when he said in John 8 verse 58. Before Abraham was. I am. So now we deal with a resurrected Christ. That is alive and well in the earth today. In the midst of absolute and complete chaos, sometimes it seems in this world. But we know there is a resurrected Christ in the world, and that changes everything. That changes our perspective. That changes our hope. That changes what we might be concerned about tomorrow because Christ is alive and well and walking to and fro in the earth looking for somebody to tell him to do something. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. All of us, whether you receive him or not, mm -hmm. are living this morning in a world where there is a resurrected Jesus yes. who is in the world today. Mm -hmm. And like the song says, he walks with me. Yeah. He talks with yeah. me. Uh -huh. A life, yeah. a long life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. He lives. Salvation yes, to impart. You ask me how? Uh -huh. I know he lives. Uh -huh. For he lives yeah. within my heart. Yeah. Christ is risen. Now, what are you going to do about it? Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap for the Yes, church family, he is risen. And we believe that we should act like it. Amen. Be all in with serving him with whatever time you might have left. And let's continue to work. Yes. Continue to trust. Yeah, thank you. Continue to believe. Continue to walk by faith uh -huh. and not by sight. Uh -huh. Continue to serve. Continue to be on record of having done all that you can do. Listen, all you can do is all you can do. You can't do anymore. Then all you can do, yes. and our Lord knows what our limits are. Yes. He knows. Yes, he does. Let us continue to work. Yes. You don't know the resurrected Christ this morning. You've been on the fence. Mm -hmm. You see something different going on, and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it's getting your attention. Every eye closed in the house. You on YouTube, on the conference call line, I'm speaking with you in terms of this opportunity. You don't know this resurrected Christ, not like the way you think you need to. And you know where you are with him. We can't con God. He knows. He knows every hair on our head. He knows every dot, every tittle, every situation. He knows the detail you can't even tell your pastor about. He knows it all. The evil and the good. Can't con him. Can't con him. Can't con him. 
and you want to get to know him a little bit better, I can tell you that he has authorized me to invite you into his kingdom with all your stuff, with all your questions, with all of your doubts, with your past history, with church and church folk, situations that disappointed you, all of that, he's saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For those of you that are on YouTube or watching this online on the conference call line, if you just stand right where you are, God sees you. I don't have to be there. God sees you. He sees you responding to this call. For those of you that are under the sound of my voice here at Lee Haven, if you want to just make sure if all things are right between you and a resurrected Christ, just stand up right where you are. It's right where you are. Just stand up and Christ will get it right for you. This is not the time to be ashamed. This is not the time to be embarrassed. This is not the time to think you're right and not be. This is not the time. I see you standing. I see you standing. I I'm standing. Who else wants to stand and, and let, let the Lord see this? That's all you're going to have to do. I see you standing. Somebody else needs to stand. You won't have to stand for long. I wish y'all could see what I see. These are people that want to get it right, want to make sure it's right, want to have no doubt that it's right. God, you see those that are standing. They said enough just by their standing. Now, Lord, I'm asking you, if you be with me today, to speak their, their need in their heart. And even as they confess you as Lord, right where they are standing, those that may have never known you, that they confess to themselves that they believe God raised you from the dead, that you are a resurrected Christ. Even as they stand before you, they ask you to cleanse them of all unrighteousness, to cleanse them of every sin, every sin, and all those thoughts that were not true, honest, just, all those thoughts that were not pure. Cleanse them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Let there be nothing after this moment that stands between you and them. Let them be pure before you. As they take hope in the blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary. And then, Lord, show them what they need to continue on the path of serving you in these days. Some have already come to me and communicated what the Lord is speaking to them. Give them discernment and a clear path. Take every obstacle out of their way that causes them to slip back or be, not to be able to pursue you with the confidence and the energy that they need. Give them what they need, Lord, because they stood up today. Bless their families, bless everything that they love and everybody that loves them. Give them a holy boldness that they desire to have because you're not going to take us out of the world. You're going to cause us to serve while we're still in the world. But you said we're not of this world, but we're in it. Help us to be holy boldness. Allow the angels of the Lord to camp round about us. Protect us, Lord, from all hurt, harm, and danger. Even as we put on the whole armor of God each and every day before we walk out our places of abode, cause us to put on the whole armor of God that we may come against the schemes of the enemy. And Lord, those that stood, give them a hunger and a thirst for the things of God, a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. We ask these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let the church say amen. 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 Why don't we all stand up and give the Lord a hound, round of applause in the house of the Lord. Amen. We thank God for his word. We thank God for giving us his favor today, choosing us, Lee Haven and Dale. Hallelujah. To share a word with us. Yes. All hearts and minds clear. 
Amen. Associate Pastor, yes. am I missing something? No, you got it all. Why don't you do benediction? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for that yes. blessed word from on high. Let's give God another round of applause. Yeah. What will you do with Jesus? Yeah. We thank God for our pastor, Amen. Ken, and for the word that he certainly brought forth. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. As you leave this place of worship, Yes. Leave remembering mm. that God is a God who is omnipotent. Yes. That he is a God who is altogether lovely. Yes. And he is a God who is present. Yes. So as you leave, remember that tomorrow mm. might be too late. Yes. So if you don't know him as Lord and as Savior, mm -hmm. confess. Your yes. sins before him. Yes. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You are dismissed. God bless you. Amen. Why don't you hug somebody and tell them God bless you? God love you. God bless you too. Yeah.